Hey, hi again. So you're probably wondering what I'm doing. I'm going to explain it in a second. Um, I want to talk to you about your the integrity of your personal brand and how that interacts with your company, your business, and your life. So in the background behind me, you will see every evolution of the Mercedes S-Class that I've ever owned. And I've owned every single one of these. Um, and this is not a bragging thing. Some of them have been very old. I started with a 1967 250 SE that used to be my father's car um, that after his death went to uh, a distant uh, kind of grandfather figure who uh, had a couple of accidents with it. Anyway, I found it. I bought it and rebuilt it and uh, renovated it right down through at college, you know, everybody was, uh, the hot car was uh, to drive a brand new Golf GTI. Um, I drove a 10 year old S class. It has always been part of my, my, my blueprint, right? And um, I really wondered about this and I've had little diversions here and there into Maseratis and uh, BMWs. Laura Louise is a BMW uh, fanatic, but I have always owned an S class. And it is to me always been that understated, elegant, reliable executive vehicle that if you can have one car, this is this is it. And I would much rather own a 10 year old S class than a brand new anything, right? Uh, if, if we're talking uh, the same price because of what it stands for, because of its comfort, Certainly, if you've ever been in an accident or a head-on collision uh, in, in anything which I have, trust me, you want to be in an S-Class Mercedes. If you're going to spend a lot of time in your car, you want to be in an S-Class Mercedes. If you're going to turn up to a meeting, don't turn up in a Lamborghini. You know what I mean? Turn up in an S-Class Mercedes, okay? That was always very, very important to me. And Mercedes-Benz, to me, has one of the, the most powerful brands in the world. And even though they've made a lot of mistakes and all that kind of thing, the one thing you can always rely on, the S-Class hand-built in Germany, is always going to be the, the winning vehicle. And you can keep it for 10 years. You can keep it for 15 years. I mean, uh, it, they are just spectacular motor vehicles. And I can always rely on that brand. And that is th through the eyes that I'd like you to think about your personal brand. What do you stand for? What can people rely on you for? Who are you? It must be recognizable. And in this modern world where you need to be omnipresent, your brand, your personal brand is the one thing that is always going to attract eyeballs and then convert those eyeballs into future raving fan clients. Now, admittedly, you need to create a system for that, okay? And I can help you with that. But I really wanted to just reinforce this point of about your personal brand and, you know, where you've got to sometimes dig a little deeper and find out what is that one, two, three punch authentic ingredients that you can be known for, that you stand for, the things that you stand up for. Because guess what? If you don't stand up stand up for what you believe in, not only is nobody else going to do it for you, but you'll be literally lying down for everything else. So really dig deep on this, my friends. Like really give this some thought and, you know, come to our our next meeting or our next coffee shop meeting where I'll discuss this. And that is going to be on uh, next week. I, I will put a, put a link into it for the Magnum Cafe where we can discuss the power of creating a personal brand and how you, number one, how you do it, how you distribute that brand and what is the best way to actually create it so that people can recognize you and, and see it. So just like the Mercedes-Benz S-Class, Yes, you can go figure out if you are a, a Ferrari guy or you are a Honda guy. I, it doesn't matter. Honda has one of the most powerful brands in the world. You see what I mean? And everybody who is a Honda fan knows what they stand for, right? You want to be like that kind of brand. You want to be that strong and that powerful so that people across the internet, people across emails, people across people who meet you at an event, people who meet you at a conference know, ah, there goes that such and such guy. 
because if you don't consciously build a brand, trust me, other people will be doing it for you because your brand is really about the things that people say about you when you're not there. So if you think about your brand in its relation to sales and marketing, right? So marketing very much is the stories that you wish to tell to the people that you want to serve, right? And if that is marketing, then well, then what is your brand? Well, your brand is the magnet that attracts those people to you, that attracts those people to your fireplace, to your dinner table, to your bar counter, so that you can tell them the stories that you want to tell Want, that you wish to tell them so that you can serve them, right? So give your brand, your personal brand, some thought in this thing. Sorry, the video got a little bit longer, but I just really wanted to share this with you guys and invite you to our next coffee shop meeting uh, next week so that we can really get into this. And I would love to talk to you more about that. So until then, God bless you and have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. Bye.